Hi, welcome to this spot where we will look at 15 plus thumb rules related to IAM. This will help you clear these certifications. Please subscribe to my channel for more such informative content. We will primarily look at these topics. So you should remember that any service in AWS, you can link it up with IAM. IAM, what it does is, it before you start the service, it will ask you for username and password. That is the stuff so that only authorized people can access it. In a company, for example, suppose Bank of America, the IAM system will have all the employees as their users so that they can access the services. So this is our first thumb rule. You can use IAM to securely control individual and group access to your AWS resources. In this diagram, these are AWS resources and we are securely controlling the access through IAM. Please remember, this is a free of cost service. There are no charges. There is a feature called MFA. Even the MFA is free of cost. So what are the things you can do using IAM? You can manage the users, groups, you can manage credentials and you can manage policies. So four things, groups, users, credentials and policies. You can manage it. So groups, inside the groups, there are users. Because if suppose you have a group, for example, the HR department, so you have a group called for HR, you have a group for finance, you have a group for marketing, based on the departments. And under each department, whichever employees are there, you make them users. So the group is a collection of users. And what you can do here is you can add and remove them from groups. You can a user who belong a user can belong to multiple groups. Okay, for example, one person uh, was in sales. He continues to be in sales, and he's also as a part of marketing teams. Okay, and within the group there cannot be other groups. Now, who can manage these things? Only the AWS account holder can manage it. You can also organize in similar paths. So this is called hierarchy. You can organize the users and groups in a hierarchy so that it is more manageable. See, this is a global service. When you create a service, you don't have to give a region. But you see other services like EC2, S3, etc. You have to select a region. But for IAM, you don't have to select a region. It will work across all regions. See, now there is a feature of MFA devices that is multi-factor authentication. What happens is you will get a device. It can be physical or it can be a virtual device. And it is an extra precaution. It will uh, send you an OTP. For example, nowadays in your bank, apart from the username and password, they send you an OTP in your mobile phone. What is mobile mobile phones or SMS in the mobile phone? It is a MFA dev device. It's a multi-factor authentication device. See, these whatever keys and certificates that are being generated inside a IAM, you can you will have to rotate it at a certain period of interval. How you can rotate it is using APIs, CLIs, and IAM consoles. Now, you can set an initial password for the IAM users through the IAM console or the APIs. So, the password will never appear in clear text. In future, even if you try to fire the API commands, it, the password will not be returned. It is very important to set strong password policy. You can do that here. And you can also set a minimum length. You can set a password expiration or you can prevent reusing the old passwords. Okay. In many websites, you see the first time you log in, it tells you this was your default password. Now you get an opportunity to change your password. You can do that here also. You can click that option. See, there is a concept called IAM rules. It is not associated with a specific user or group. So it, what it does is you, you can create entities and assign roles to these entities. This question, uh, I mean, this uh, thumb rule comes in the exam as well uh, about temporary security credentials. What is it? So what it does is, you know, there are, uh, you can set up a temporary credential for a specified duration of time with some very specific permissions. For example, you want S3 bucket to be only read. Uh, by a contractor, you have a contractor working for you, so you give him or her a temporary credential so that they can only read from S3, they cannot write anything in S3. That is one thing, or you can give access only to particular folders which do not have sensitive information that you can do. These are also referred to as tokens. Remember in the exam, if you get quizzed around like temporary access to be given, etc., this is the answer temporary security credentials or tokens. See, like I gave an example, if you have an external user, for example, your contractors, they are not an yeah, employee of your organization. There is no need to create an AWS identity for them if you know that they have only come here for some installation configuration work, which will last for 15 days. Do not create an AWS identity for them. For this purpose, you can use federation or 
This is also called temporary security credentials. You can use it. And you can configure the time period for which this will be active. This improves the security posture of your company also. And that is what this thumb rule talks about. The external parties get access to your systems using this. And federated users are users who manage outside of AWS corporate directory. They are not a part of your employee directory. They are outside. They are external entities. This is very important from the exam standpoint. AWS Cloud Practitioner Solution Architect Associate, you will definitely get questions linked with this. You will also get questions linked with MFA for sure. So MFA is multi-factor authentication. Just like I told you, banks nowadays, when you try to do an internet login, it asks for username and password, and it also sends an OTP to your mobile devices. Consider your mobile devices as an MFA device. Similar to MFA, like mobile devices, MFA devices can be sent. It can be physical. It can be virtual. And the beauty is, this there is no charge for MFA also. IAM is free. MFA is free. This was a short video. We have covered few thumb rules around IAM. Please subscribe to, be, to this channel. If you want many more informative contents, this channel is totally dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications. Hence, please subscribe to my channel. This brings us to the end of this part. See you in the next part.